Lesson 6.4, Common Denominators and Equivalent Fractions. We can rewrite a pair of fractions so that they have a common denominator. We can make a list of multiples for each denominator, finding a multiple that they have in common, then multiplying each denominator by a factor that will equal that multiple. We can also multiply the two denominators to find a common denominator. Here we have the fractions 1 fourth and 1 fifth. We can just multiply the denominators 4 times 5. That's 20. So 20 is a common denominator for these two fractions. We can also list the multiples of 4, then make a list of the multiples of 5, and find a multiple that they have in common. They have 20 in common, so again, we see that 20 would be a common denominator. Once we know that they have 20 in common, we use the information, the 4 and the 20, to help us find the factor that it's being multiplied to become a 20. We think 4 times some number is equal to 20. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. We multiply the numerator by that same factor, 5. Our new fraction is 5 twentieths, and it's equivalent to 1 fourth. We do the same thing with the 1 fifth. 5 times some number is equal to 20. And we think, well, 5 times 4 is equal to 20. We multiply the numerator by that same 4, and we get 4 twentieths for an equivalent fraction for 1 fifth. So whatever we multiply the denominator by to get 20, we need to multiply the numerator by that same factor. Otherwise, the numerator could get jealous. We can use a common denominator or common multiple of two or more denominators to write fractions that name the same part of a whole. We can multiply the denominators. We have one-half and one-third. We do two times three. That's six. We have a rectangle cut right here in half, and we divide it into thirds. So it was in half, and we made it into thirds by drawing thirds for each half. Here, we have black lines cutting the rectangle into three equal parts, into thirds, and we divide each third in half. Each of the holes will be divided into the same size parts, six, just like two times three is equal to six. So one-third and one-half have six as a common denominator. So a common denominator of one-half and one-third is six. We write one-half and one-third as equivalent fractions using the common denominator six. We have two times some number is equal to six. That would be two times three is equal to six. We multiply the numerator one by the same number three, and one times three is equal to three. One-half and three-sixths are equivalent fractions. We do the same thing for the one-third. Three times some number is equal to six. That would be three times two. We multiply the numerator by two, and we find that one-third and two-sixths are equivalent fractions. We can find a common denominator for one-half and one-third by making a list of their non-zero multiples. That means they're multiples that are not zero. So the multiples of two are two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. The multiples of three are three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. We use one of the common multiples as a common denominator. We can use six or we can use twelve. 2 times some number is equal to 6. That would be 2 times 3. We multiply the numerator by that same factor, and we get 3 6. We can multiply 3 times some number to get 6. That would be a 2. We multiply the numerator by that same factor and get 2 6. For 12, we multiply 2 times some number is equal to 12. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. We multiply the numerator by that same factor, 6, so it doesn't get jealous. We get 6 twelfths as an equivalent fraction to 1 half. For 1 third, we think 3 times some number is equal to 12. That would be 3 times 4. We multiply the numerator 
but the same factor of 4, and we get 4 twelfths as an equivalent fraction for 1 third. A common denominator of two fractions represents a common multiple of the denominators. We have 2 thirds and 3 fifths. The least common denominator, we can find the least common denominator of two or more fractions by finding their least common multiple. We list non-zero multiples of each denominator, 3 and 5, see? And we choose the lowest number they have in common. So for the multiples of 3, it has a 15, and the multiples of 5 has a 15. You notice they also have a 30, but if we choose that, it won't be the least number they have in common. The least would be 15. That would be the least common multiple that would be the least common denominator for two-thirds and three-fifths. Since we found that 15 is the least common multiple, we think 3 times some number is equal to 15. That's 3 times 5. We multiply the numerator times 5, and we get 10 fifteenths as an equivalent fraction. So two-thirds and 10 fifteenths are equivalent fractions. Here we have 3 fifths. We think 5 times some number is 15. That would be 5 times 3. We multiply the numerator times 3 and get a 9. We have 9 fifteenths. That means 3 fifths and 9 fifteenths are equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions name the same amount or part. It's like 1 tenth is equivalent to 10 hundredths. They're naming the same amount of this model. Find a common denominator by multiplying the denominators. We have 3 sevenths and 1 fifth. We multiply 7 times 5, which is 35, so that's going to be our common denominator for 3 sevenths and 1 fifth. We ask ourselves 7 times some number is equal to 35. That would be 7 times 5. We multiply the numerator times 5 and get 15. So we know that 15 35ths is equivalent to 3 sevenths. Here we have 1 fifth. We think 5 times some number is 35. That would be 7. We multiply the numerator by that same factor so it doesn't get jealous, and we have 7 35ths as an equivalent fraction. The least common multiple will be less or equal to the product of multiplying the denominators. So if we have 1 6 and 1 9th and we multiply their denominators, we get a 54. But that's not the least common multiple. The least common multiple is less than or equal to the product of when we multiply the denominators. 18 is less than 54. So keep in mind, if you're using multiplication of the denominators to find a common multiple, it may not be the least. To find the least, you might need to list the non-zero multiples of each denominator. What is three times the least common denominator of one-third, five-sixths, and three-eighths? And think, we can make a list of the non-zero multiples for three, six, and eight, and find their least common multiple for all three of them, then multiply that number by 3 to find 3 times that. We list the multiples of 3, 6, and 8. We find the least number, the least multiple they have in common, and it's a 24. We do 3 times 24. 3 times 4 is 12. We regroup the 10 and put the 2 down in the 1's place. 3 times 2 10's is 60, and one more is 70. We put a 7 in the tens place. So, 3 times the least common denominator is 72. Sarah has three ribbons of equal length. She cut the pink ribbon into two equal size lengths. She cut the orange ribbon into four equal size lengths, and the brown ribbon into eight equal size lengths. Sarah needs to cut the ribbon so each color has the same number of equal size lengths. What is the least number of equal size lengths each color ribbon could have? 
and we think we can make a quick drawing to help us solve this. We draw a line for the pink ribbon, a line for the orange one, and a line for the brown one, and we put the cuts in them to make that many pieces of equal size lengths, and we can use their least common multiple. We can list the multiples of 2, 4, and 8. We find that 8 is the least common multiple. That would be the least number of equal size lengths for each color ribbon. We know the answer is 8. We need to circle the pairs of fractions that are equivalent to the fraction pair 3 fourths and 2 thirds. Are 6 eighths and 6 ninths equivalent to 3 fourths and 2 thirds? We can list the multiples of the numerators and the multiples of the denominators for 3 fourths, and 6 eighths is an equivalent fraction to 3 fourths. That would be 3 times 2 and 4 times 2. We would get 6 eighths. Is 6 ninths an equivalent fraction for 2 thirds? We look and that would be 2 times 3 and 3 times 3. We would multiply the numerator and denominator by 3 to get 6 ninths. So yes, 6 eighths and 6 ninths are equivalent to the fraction pair 3 fourths and 2 thirds. How about the pair 30 fortieths and 12 eighteenths? We see if 30 fortieths is equivalent to 3 fourths. Yes, we would multiply 3 times 10 and 4 times 10. We would multiply the numerator and denominator times 10 and we would get 30 fortieths. What about 12 eighteenths for 2 thirds? Yes, we would do 2 times 6 and 3 times 6 to get 12 eighteenths. We'd multiply the numerator and denominator by 6 to get 12 eighteenths. Is 12 fifteenths equivalent to 3 fourths? When we look, it says 12 sixteenths. 3 times 4 is 12 and 4 times 4 is 16. So 12 fifteenths is not equivalent to 3 fourths. 8 twelfths is equivalent to 2 thirds, but the pair needs to be equivalent, so this is not an equivalent pair. We know 6 eighths and 6 ninths are, and 30 fortieths and 12 eighteenths are. So remember as you're making these equivalent fractions that you're multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same factor to create that equivalent fraction. Our next lesson, 6.5, we're going to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, and I'll show you how. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're safe and well, and I'll see you next time. Hit the like button. Bye.